Hi, I'm Carol from Stitch in Heaven, and today we're going to talk about your Thanksgiving table. There's a lot of ideas that I have to share with you, and you have time. There's time to sew before Thanksgiving. First of all, I want to point out to you that there's a lot of different ways you can approach this without having to go and find a collection that's just strictly Thanksgiving. You can start out with your dishes that you have at home, and I'm going to show you how versatile it is. If you have just something plain like this plate right here, you have a whole gamut of ideas that, um, that can bring you a really exciting table. Look at this fat quarter bundle. It's got all the fall colors in lots of uh, different prints and it can be a very traditional color scheme. Or if you like a more modern look, Look at this fat quarter bundle. It's really just textures and it's got all the brights. This one of course has greens and it's a smaller bundle so you don't have to go and buy this much fabric if you don't want to. Just showing you different options. You can go in to our website and look and see at all the fat quarter bundles we have that you could use. Now I'm going to talk about what you can do with those fat quarters to make a table runner. Table Runner is really a very simple project. You don't have to get too involved. There are plenty of fun patterns. The ones I'm going to show you here today are super simple. This one's called Diamonds. You can make two of these with one charm pack. So that's those are five and a half inch squares. So um, look at this. It's got all the instructions on one little card. This one is a braid and it also can be made with fat quarters. This is a quilt as you go technique in this little instruction booklet. And here's another quilt as you go. This one is batting and you sew your fabric to the batting. So you've already got all the whole thing um, nearly finished by the time you sew it together. And for something a little bit um, gives you more options is this book, Trendy Table 2. Trendy Table 2, I was just glancing through it and there's one in here that's a 10 minute table runner. Now everybody has time for that. Now it may take you 30 minutes if you decide to add these appliques, but you can see that if you have some fat quarters that are just the right colors for your table, all you have to do is seam them together Put a binding on and you're done. So for those of you that are all set for your table runner, you might also want to consider another super easy project for your Thanksgiving table. Now I don't know about you, but I love to use my grandmother's china on holidays. This is my grandmother's china. It's a very, it's a long discontinued Wedgwood pattern and it's quite ornate. A lot of people would think it's old-fashioned looking and I, had, I would agree with that, but one thing that you can do to jazz it up is to create a little more interest with your table linens. I've partnered it here with this more modern placemat, but another thing I like to do is of course add cloth napkins with a little pattern to them. This is a traditional, more traditional um, approach to doing that. It's just a little white napkin with a little print and you can do that. Uh, maybe you want to add a little bit more interest by using a solid of another color, bringing in the purple or something like that. But another thing I like to do is consider doing mismatched napkins. And this is a great and fun project to do for the holidays because, you know, we're often getting those last minute guests and if you've planned your whole table around matching napkins and linens, you're sunk if you add four more people. You might have to add another table. So what I like to do is create a whole array of mismatched napkins and then I can add however many I need to at the end. Well look at here, if you have plain plates, look what you could do with that. You're creating a really exciting tablescape that almost looks like a quilt. And look again, if you like a more modern approach, look at all these colors. And these came out of a fat quarter bundle. Now what I like to do with my grandmother's china is I like to create a modern feel with a bunch of different mismatched prints. See what I've done here? These, I just came to the fat quarter wall here at Stitch in Heaven, and I picked the ones that I like to go together. The added advantage of using mismatched napkins is that everybody knows which one is theirs and you still have your napkin when it when dessert comes around. I like the fat quarters because when you throw these into the washing machine you can bring them right out and you really don't need to iron them. Quilting cottons have that really nice weave that really doesn't wrinkle much. Now that I've gotten you excited about the idea of mismatched napkins I'm going to show you a really easy way to make them so that you're not stressed over it. And really this is a project that your child can do. Your beginner sewer 
you're, even if you're a beginner sewer, this is something you can do. And you'll really enjoy it, I think, because you'll see the immediate results. Okay, first of all, you're gonna unfold your fat quarter, and look, it's a nice, generous napkin size. It's 18 by 22, and that's a great size for a napkin. Also, you know what? These don't um, have lint at all, so you're first gonna, you're gonna wash the, your fabric, and you're gonna trim off the selvage. That's just the prep, and it won't have all these folds in it after you do that. Put it down on a press uh, on your ironing board, lay it flat, and then, I found this to be a really great tool. This is called a hot ruler. I really just tried this yesterday and I think it's a great option. You put it down on the fabric and you fold the um, fold over it. it you, have, you can measure right up to that fourth inch line and then you take your iron and you iron it down and it doesn't melt. When you start pressing this, you wanna start on the top edge as it's facing away from you. When you get to the corner, you're gonna go around counterclockwise. And this is important as I'll explain it to you later. Okay, when you've gone around once, you're gonna just do the same thing. Go around one more time so you have two folds on each edge, continuing to go counterclockwise. Okay, so now I have one that I've already done and, and clipped down. These little sewing clips are really handy for this because they keep everything flat. So you're gonna start now on the upper edge. You really start on any upper edge, but this time you're gonna go clockwise. So start on the edge where you've got the fold looks like that, and you're gonna start in this little corner right here. Okay, as I'm getting close to the end, I want to go a little bit slower. Go almost all the way to the end. Give yourself a little bit of space. Lift your presser foot and rotate. And you're basically going to sew across this corner at about a 45 degree angle. Three or four stitches. and leave the needle down again. Then, rotate again. Didn't go quite far enough. So now that you've gone around your entire napkin without stopping, you've gotten to the end and you've tied it off with a couple of back stitches. Um, take it off the machine and fold it. Super easy to fold. You've got a generous napkin and you can make as many as you need for all those Thanksgiving guests that are coming. And this is Carol from Stitch in Heaven. Happy Thanksgiving.